Doesn't it feel good to be together again? Amen. God is so good. Welcome to Bicota Baptist Church. Whether you're here or watching us online, may you be blessed today because I tell you what, it's only because of the goodness of God and how much he loves us that we're here. And I want to thank God for his answered prayer and for our pastor who had a birthday. So we're going to sing Happy Birthday to Pastor Linda. What do you think? Good idea? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Linda. Happy birthday to you. And many more on channel. God bless you, Pastor. We love you more than you know in your family. Don't you? We couldn't ask for a better pastor because let me tell you, our pastor preaches the word. Both pastors. <laughs> Good to be here this morning, man. Amen. Man. I wish there were more here, but but it makes God's heart happy to see y'all here this morning. I can imagine seeing God stand up from the throne and see God Almighty, but I can see him doing cartwheels. All right, look at my people down there. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I got some good to read here. This, this is really neat. Father, bless the reading of this word. Amen. It's called, Remember when your mother caught you disobeying one of her orders? You were guilty, caught red handed, and you knew it, and you had to accept your punishment. Over the years, the situations have changed drastically. But the results are the same, disobedience and guilt. The reality is that the deserved punishment for our sins is death, eternal death, separation from God forever. But this passage says we have been declared not guilty. No matter what we have done, we have been acquitted and forgiven because of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thus we have peace with God and stand in a place of highest privilege. Not only has God declared us not guilty, he has drawn us close to himself. Instead of being his enemies, we have become his friends, in fact, his very own children. Ooh, wow. Mm -hmm. Being freed from the shackles of sin and the burden of guilt, we are now free to serve our loving Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You know, when I, well, what can I say about that? It's just so, touches your heart so much, you can't explain stuff like that. Amen. <laughs> you understand it, don't you? <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. But let's pray. Father, I just want to thank you for this wonderful morning, for bringing us together. Father, I thank you, Father God, that you have touched Pastor Tisdale. And Father, that your spirit just lifted him up out of that bed. And, and you got the victory in the name of Jesus. You gave a victory to him. You gave a victory to us. And Jesus, we give you the glory and honor and praise this morning. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Father, right now, I just ask that your spirit would just, just uh, take control of this service, that you may be honored. And Father, I cover this whole sanctuary with the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Right now, just, just shut your eyes and think about the blood of Jesus Christ right now. Because, you know, it's the blood is what 
but bought us. It's the blood is what brought us here. And it's the blood of Jesus Christ that says he's going to take us out. Oh, don't that feel so good? I just feel God's peace in your soul <laughs> so much right now, I can't explain it. And Father, I thank you and I pray you, Father, for your wonderful love. Father, just draw our hearts. Draw us closer to each other. And Father, most of all, draw us closer to your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 Ooh, boy. Talk about being drunk in the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I found out there wasn't a piano, and I thought, Lord, help me. So, Caleb is going to be playing <laughs> the piano. You want to stand? I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. We're praising today because we're here.
be the name of the Lord. Amen. Before we kind of sing this song, uh, it came to me, you know, like at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, it was right after I uh, found out that Linville went home because we'd been praying so hard for everyone. And, you know, God is just, we, call, we can call God our own. Amen. You know, they might take whatever away from us, but they cannot take the God who loves us, Amen. who we belong to. Amen. So no matter what happens, we are with the Lord. Our hope is not in the government, it's in the Lord. Amen. And we can stand and say, you know, Lord, you are my all in all. That means everything. So this song came to me at that time, you're my all in all.
Yea, I will sing of thy mercy in the morning, for thou hast been my defense and my refuge in the day of my trouble. Amen. And I felt it was so good. Because I tell you what, the Lord is with us. Amen. And he's not leaving us. And he is the only way, he's the only way we're going to have victory. Amen. The pandemic is nothing, for God is over it all. Amen. And there it stands. Is he good to you this morning? He is. for offering at this time. Our ushers are going to pass in front of you uh, to try not to pass the plate and just limit the exposure to people and things and so tithes and offerings to the Lord this morning. I'm going to ask Brother Bobby Baker to say a word of prayer for us. Father, as we come to you this morning, we praise your name, Father. We just call, ask that you allow the Holy Spirit to have full control this morning again by cover. We'll give you all the praise and the honor for it. Lord, we ask you just to thank you. Amen.
take this off so I don't eat it. Uh, it's hard to it's hard to speak at all and have a mask on. But as long as I'm around other people, I'll try to respect your space and put it back on uh, so that you don't feel like I'm going wild child only. Okay. Uh, so first of all, I, I like to start off uh, with, with some positive information. Uh, you can call it positive social media, positive feedback, whatever you want to call it. But I'll tell you what, in a world that's just full of negative all the time, it could use a little bit of light. And we're called to be the light to others. And so when you see something that's glorifying and edifying to the kingdom, and it touches your heart, it touches your day, it changes your day, you should be putting that forward and sending that out. So God has put that on my heart to do that. And so I do it on Facebook. A lot of you put different things out there, different messages, different sayings. Uh, Gary, you send me a lot. There's there's several in here that send a lot. Liz, I've seen several of yours. Uh, they're out there. And so I appreciate that. And what I do is I'll, I'll like it and share it so that somebody else can see it. And I think that that just spreads positivity to cover some of the negative out there. So I want to start, if I may, with this one. I like this. It's a picture of a house being carried away by a bird. It said, fear does not stop death. It stops life. And worrying does not take away tomorrow's trouble. It takes away today's peace. And that's really what it is. We're not called to sit there and worry and be caught up in what's happening in the world. We're not called to be irritated with each other. We're called to give it to the Lord and, and let him take care of it. And he gives our heart and our mind peace. I know that the scripture says so. 
So that's that's where we need to be, right? And so when you're when you're worried about something or something's troubling you or you've got something on your mind, just give it to him and just be done with it. And I've noticed, I know it's hard to do. Hands up, right? Anybody know that? It's hard to do, but when you do it, there's a peace that comes over you. I've experienced it. I know it exists, but you have to be willing to take the first step to experience the peace. I like this one. Uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. Where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. What is your treasure this morning? What is it? And I, <laughs> Amen, Gary. Thank you for that. The treasure is the word. The treasure is God. The kingdom, right? Um, but sometimes it's not. And so what I like about that is that wherever we get off base, that gets us redirected and refocused where we need to be. And so I like that. Uh, I like this one. Check this one out. And I really want you to take this one in because this one hit me. It's hard to throw stones if you're busy washing feet. Keep loving people like Christ. Amen. Woo! Amen. If you're caught up in the kingdom's work, you don't have any time to mess around. Amen. You certainly don't have time to judge what somebody else is doing. You're worried about your relationship with him and what he's calling you to do. And he will call you into other people's lives, but you're not... You're not called to sit there and dissect every second of their day. You're called every second of the day to follow him. Amen. Amen. Lastly, I like this one. Blowing out someone else's candle won't make yours shine brighter. Remember that. We're called to encourage each other, to motivate, to bring each other up. When somebody tries, even if they don't succeed, you know, you're supposed to let them know, hey, that was a great effort, you know. And you're not just doing it to do it. Don't do it to be fake or to try to fill a hole. You're doing it because that's what we're called to do. Yeah. Right? And so just remember to be encouraging not to knock somebody else's light out. That light may be God's light to somebody else in the world. That's right. So my question, I like to start off with questions because they're icebreakers and God uses questions in my life to grow my, my faith, to grow my relationship with Him. And so... The question is really going to be the caption of the message this morning. When does hearing become believing? When does hearing become believing? You have to hear it 10 times, 15 times. When does hearing become believing? And I want to jump right into scripture on that. Matthew 16, verses 13 through 23. You're free to join in with me or I've got it up here on the screen. You can follow either way you want to. If you have the Bible on a tablet or a phone, it's not cheating. I would rather you have it there than not have it at all. So please pull out whatever you have and follow along. And I see people still looking down, so I'm going to give you just a second to do that. I don't want to run ahead of anybody. Okay? And it says there, When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea, Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Amen. Then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord. He said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. And what I want to point out there is that this was one of the times that Jesus very clearly told them, he told his disciples that I am going to be killed. This is going to happen. He threw it out there to them. And um, Simon just kind of basically said, we're going to stop it from happening. We're going to get in front of it somehow. You know, and Jesus' response, get behind me, Satan. 
Can you imagine the look on his face when that happened? <laughs> right, taken back. But he was true. He didn't have the concerns of God. He had the concerns of himself, more of a selfish concern. He didn't realize how big this thing actually was. Matthew chapter 17, verses 1 through 9 says this. After six days, Jesus took with him Peter, James, and John, the brother of James, and led them up a high mountain by themselves. There he was transfigured before them. And I just want you to think about that for a second. If you were there with him, you just see this amazing transfiguration happen. His face uh, shone like the sun, and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then there appeared before them Moses and Elijah talking with Jesus. Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I will put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instructed them, Don't tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. Again, very clearly illustrating, I must die. Right? It's put out there again. And there wasn't really much comment to that, much, much response to that. Matthew chapter 17, verse 22 and 23. When they came together in Galilee, he said to them, The Son of Man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him. And on the third day, he will be raised to life. And the disciples were filled with grief. They heard it, but were they really understanding? Did it make sense? The, the thought of losing him was more than they could bear. But they didn't realize that what he was saying was going to come to pass. This is really going to happen. I'm trying to prepare you so that you know, so that you're not taken back by what's going to happen next. You're fully aware of what's going to happen. Jesus continued to tell his disciples the same thing, and they were not sure how they were supposed to feel or what they were supposed to do with that information. You ever been there? Today, I'm here to share with you that Jesus is coming again, and we need to be preparing for his arrival. Keep in mind what it says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 17. It says this, From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. The kingdom of heaven is, is upon us. And the time for which Jesus can come back and call his people up can happen right now while I'm standing here speaking. And you know what? You don't have to fear that if you're ready for that. Right? But being ready is not as selfish as making ready for yourself. It's making for yourself. And if you really have the Spirit of the Lord in you, then you have a burning passion and a desire to share that with everybody that you encounter. Amen. Because you want to make sure it's like, it's like a house on fire on your block. You don't know who lives there, but you don't want to take a chance of letting somebody burn up. So you go knock on the door feverishly to make sure that everybody gets out. There are a lot of people in this world, their house is burning down around them and they have no idea. It is on us to make sure that they know the truth, that they have the educated information to make a choice to turn away from all of them. And I'm telling you, God is calling his people for a time such as this. It's time to take action. It's time to move. Talking is a thing of the past. Let's do something with it. As we prepare for the Lord's Supper, I would like to ask our deacons to come up. I want to share with you as we prepare this time what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 27 through 30. This is not to scare you. I just want you to know. So then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. And so my whole moral to that, the whole point I'm trying to make is right now, if you need to take a minute to get right with the Lord, or you need to take a minute to examine yourself, do that. Don't take that lightly. It's a big thing. It's very important.
Okay, I don't want to do this. Right. <coughs> going to have the ushers kind of pass back and forth the plate um, in front of you. So please take the, the element and uh, move on. If you're if you're not, you know that you're in a place where you're not supposed to participate. Just kind of wave them on, let them know. Okay. Read from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 and 24 starts off. It says, For I have received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. and 26 says in the same way after supper he took the cup saying this is, this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me for whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes amen um, at this time, I would like to ask Brother Lindell to come up. He has something he would like to share. Judy and I struggled with this for some months. And now, uh, well, this letter comes as a result of that. Dear Bicota Baptist Church family, after much prayer and meditation and tears of seeking direction, God's direction, we are submitting our resignation as your senior pastor and wife, effective December the 27th, 2020. Judy and I have been contemplating this since before I got sick with COVID, which the Lord has used to confirm our decision. Judy needs my help at home more than ever with Evelyn and I am not able to 
be the that be there to help her as long as I'm a full-time pastor. And we plan to stay active at Bacota in a voluntary way through a ministry of encouragement as the Lord directs. We know if we do what God is leading us to do, he will make everything else work out to the glory, to his glory, because, because it is his work and his church, as Romans 8, 28 teaches us. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are the called according to his purpose. Just because we are stepping down from this leadership position doesn't mean we are quitting. We are simply changing gears and will continue serving our Lord here, Jesus Christ, until he comes or until he chooses to take us home to be with him. We have sought to give out our best effort to the Lord's work as your pastor and wife and will continue to give our all to the Lord in this less demanding role. We give thanks to God always for you all making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God our Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God. 1 Corinthians 1, 2-4, through 4, with love and prayer. Brother Limble and Judy. I, as the Lord has delivered me from COVID, I was taken to the hospital and and I knew I was I was bad, but I didn't know how bad. And the doctor the, the day after I got there but I, I don't even remember that night but they came in and said we've, we've got to put a, you on a ventilator to save your life called Judy and said the, the ventilator you've got a 50% chance of saving his life without it you've got 5% <coughs> chance of living and so they put me on the ventilator. I didn't remember that five days at all. And the day after I got off, I knew I couldn't hardly breathe. And uh, the doctor came in the next day and said, Mr. Tisdale, you are not doing well. We called your family in to say goodbye. <laughs> We don't think you live through the night. We can put you back on the ventilator, but we don't know if we can get you off again if we do. And I had the cognizance to, I couldn't carry on a conversation except just a word or two here or there, but I can remember saying, Doc, I've tried the ventilator and I'm going to trust God. And if he wants to take me home tonight, I'm ready. But I believe with God's grace, I'm going to beat this thing. Amen. And the next day, the doctor came by and said, we don't know what's happened, but you're better. We think you're going to make it. <laughs> and I said, I know what happened. It's by God's grace right. that I'm still here and I'm going to I'm going to beat this and God has allowed me to, to go through that and I've asked him Lord why did you leave me here? He hasn't told me everything that I need to know yet. But he did tell me. He said, you've, you've, you've been my pastor for these many years. And I've left you. 
to pastor your wife and her mother-in-law. And there, Judy's health is not real good. And Evelyn's is not, is worse now than it was. And so the Lord has re just reaffirmed our decision to resign as pastor. I can't be there all the time that I need to be there and be here or out visiting and caring for you and others. Doesn't mean that I will not continue to be able to do that kind of thing and get some. And I want to continue to be encouraging to all the church family through phone calls. And I, I like to learn how to do that internet stuff better than I know how to do it. Y'all talk about this social media, and I said, man, I don't even know how to which button to mash. But uh, I, I, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm blessed by your ministry to me. And, uh, but I, I, God has raised a man up in our midst. I don't know about you, but uh, I'm blessed every time I hear him. And Kyle Keller, I believe, has been called of God Amen. to preach the Word of God. And every time I've heard him, it's the Word of God. He doesn't tell a bunch of stories and all this kind of stuff that preachers learn how to do in seminary. <laughs> And I have been blessed to have some input and encouragement and serve as a mentor and help him. And I want to continue to do that. And it's the church's decision about what you do with me, but uh, uh, I'm, this is my resignation. And I, I believe the church is, there's good, good days ahead for Bicota Baptist Church. And that he is not through with us. And that I, I, I want to continue to see what God will do in the days ahead, whatever power long the Lord allows us, allows me to be a part of it. And so I want to thank you for uh, hearing me this morning. And Judy and Evelyn sends their love this morning as well. Thank you. So if you were looking for something to be in prayer about, I think we just I think we just got it. Okay. Um, I ask everybody, um, don't pray that don't pray that it's me, don't pray that it's anybody specifically, just pray that the, the direction of God comes about and that it's clear. Because I'll tell you what, I love to share the word, but I want to make sure I know where God wants me to be Amen. above all things, whether it's here or wherever that is. And so uh, I will let you know that I uh, I talked to Lynn Bull, uh earlier this week, and um, I've been in prayer about it. I've, I've asked my wife and my family to be in prayer about it. And right now, God has not answered. Uh, but I still seek him out with my every my everything, uh, honestly. So um, just be in prayer about that. And know that uh, we're going to continue to move forward. Uh, we're going to continue to, to grow this church and to, to reach this community. And this coronavirus is not forever. Okay? So be caught up in who the Lord is and His ability, not the ability of a virus. Okay? You can still call. You can still text. You can still send emails. You can still do all kinds of things to encourage each other uh, without being, uh, you know, right in somebody's face. Uh, this morning, I, I would normally call uh, for a time of invitation, uh, but we're trying to uh, limit the close exposure to people. And so this morning, if I can, Kathy, I'd ask you to just play um, some instrumental like you did last night. Do you have something pulled up? Okay. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to take a second and invite you uh, if you want to just get something off your chest to speak to the Lord, 
just to come up here to the altar and just, just get right with him this morning. And if you would like to have a consultation following, I'd love to meet with you in office and that way we can give each other respectful amounts of space and uh, we'll still be private, it'll still be personal, uh, we'll shut and lock the door, 